Hello, everyone. Our today's discussion is about moon, and we will also do some of the stichiometric calculations in this lecture. So firstly, um, we have to define then what the moon is. So you may be um, unfamiliar, and I hope that you don't know about the moon. So this, this is a new term to you. So we will see what we do mean this one. And now, from this lecture onward, we are involving the maths, because this is also the way essential for uh, the successful chemistry experiments. And uh, uh, we will do some of the mathematical calculations. So these are termed as a stichiometric calculations, because where we are taking about the uh, molecular formulas, molecular weights in account, mole, and the percentage yields. So all kind of calculations um, are under that terminology. So firstly, our uh, this discussion, this lecture is mainly focusing on the mole. But before going into that particular definition and to get familiar with the new term, the important is that we get uh, refresh. We refresh some of the key terms which we already uh, know. So I hope that I have uh, I've been able to develop the concept and you have built up that concept that now you, you know what atoms are, what elements are, what the pure substances are, and what is the molecule and a compound is. You also are familiar with the IU uh, periodic table, the trends in the periodic table, and you are familiar that why the atoms are basically uh, combining with the different atoms to make a molecule. So basically they are looking for the stable configuration to complete the outermost shell with the octet. And in most of the cases, they are uh, towards to, uh, in, in a struggle to complete their outermost shell, valence shell with eight electrons. So um, just uh, refreshing these terminologies, which you uh, get familiar with. So this is the, at first is atomic number, and you know the atomic number is basically presenting the number of protons or the number of electrons. And we know that the atom and as a whole is a neutral. So unless this is not in, in, in its ionic form, so how many the protons are there? Um, so there are equal number of the electrons to stabilize the charge on the atom to make it as a neutral or electrically the zero or the neutral entity. Now the second thing is atomic mass. This is also um, the term which is basically applying for the elements and the atomic level. So atomic mass is basically the combination, the combination of the protons and the neutrons. So we know the neutrons are the neutral, they don't have uh, any electric charge. The protons are the positive one. So the charge is uh, on the atom is responsible for the protons and electrons. So atomic mass is basically uh, giving us information about the nuclei of an atom, that what is in its nucleus. So um, in case of the carbon, uh, which is an example, so there are the six protons and the six neutrons. So in, com in combined form, there is the value 12. So that 12 is basically the atomic mass of the carbon. Now the next terminology is molecular formula. And the molecular formula is basically, you can say the mathematical and the symbolic expression mentioning atoms and their numbers, which have combined to form a molecule. So we can see in the most simplest and the familiar example, that is the water molecule. And when we have to write it in its, in its molecular formula, so we will write H2O. So this is giving us the information about that, which are the atoms which are making the water molecule. So there is the two hydrogen atoms and there is one oxygen, right? So this molecular or this uh, formula and this expression, symbolic expression is basically giving us the idea that what are the different atoms and what is their total number, which is combining for making a particular molecule. So if there are the two hydrogen and one oxygen which are combining, 
So this is the water molecule, which is making the most abundant substance on the universe. So now um, there is a question that what is the molecular mass? Uh, molecular mass is also termed alternatively as a molecular weight. So you can use either term, but more preferred one is the molecular mass or the molar mass. So how we have to see that how we can calculate the molecular mass of that molecule. So the importance of molecular formula is also that it enable us to know about the structure of a molecule, to know about the atoms, to know about its molecular mass, and what is the ratio of the different atoms which are combining and making that particular molecule. So here, uh, how we can calculate the molecular mass. So for calculation and to calculate the molecular mass, first we have to see that what is that molecule made up. So what are the different contributing atoms in it? So as a whole, if you just look at this structure, so in total, there are the three atoms. So there are two hydrogens and there is one oxygen. Now for calculating the molecular mass, we have to take in account their atomic masses of each atom, which is contributing and participating in that molecular structure. So atomic mass of oxygen is 16 right and that information is available on periodic table so you can just google uh, the keyword atomic mass of oxygen so you will get that information and when you will practice and you will familiar so you um, may you will be able to know most of the common elements and their atomic number and their, their atomic masses so atomic mass of hydrogen is one so as in this particular molecule, which is a water molecule, there are the two hydrogens which is making that molecule. So it means there are the two hydrogens and each hydrogen is carrying the one unit mass. So by multiplying the total number of hydrogen, the overall net uh, contribution of the mass from the hydrogen is basically two. So combining all masses for molecular weight, one, uh, multiply two means there is the one is the uh, atomic mass for the hydrogen and there are the two num hydrogens which are making that molecule so we are multiplying that one so that will be raised to power um, uh, that will be that times how many the number of same uh, elements or the atom is repeating plus 16 is the atomic mass of oxygen so the overall answer is 18 so the atomic mass or uh, is the term which we apply only for the elements but right now we are calculating the mass for the molecule so now the term is the molecular mass or molecular weight or molecular mass right so the molecular mass or molar mass of the water is 18 so we write it as 18 gram per mole 18 amu or a, we can uh, mention that expression because this is a unit of this one. It means that in one mole of the water molecule, there are 18 grams in weight of that water molecule, right? So now there is a question. Another term which uh, you are not familiar with is the mole. So what that mole means, so this mole is basically not the uh, that mammal. It is basically the unit, um, the standard unit in our uh, SI unit, which is to express the amount of a substance. So we'll see its definition and some of about its explanation. But before defining the mole, we should know that what are the international system of units. So as you go to the market, so you purchase or you uh, buy something in kilograms in dozens and whenever you are purchasing um, some of smartphone so you look into its um, um, its pixel cam its camera or its pixel its features when you are talking about the laptop so you should know that what is its memory it is in a uh, uh, basically mb it is in a gb so there are the different units which we are using. So like in a currency, if you are working, uh, talking about your local currency and you have to convert or have to pay some amount into dollars or pounds, so you have to 
make it equivalent according to that rate. So it means you need a standard unit by which you can use that equivalence of that measurement. So for the measurement, there are the seven basic units which have established and that are over worldly. So all over the world, these are the same ones. So wherever you will go with the one meter length, that is same in in Pakistan, that is same in America, that is same in Canada or everywhere. So if you means there is a one kg or the hundred grams or the one gram, so these are the same one. So to maintain that standard, that this is a standard measurement all over the world. So we can communicate, we can exchange with each other. So these are the seven basic units. So these are length. So uh, it is a quantity which we measure, right? And its name, is, its unit is meter and its symbol is M. So the mass uh, we can measure in kilograms. This is a standard unit, but we can use their smaller units like the uh, grams, milligrams, or even the tons higher, higher than that one. But the standard unit, which is uh, the SI unit, so that is the kilogram one. So we can do their conversions. Next is the time, and the time can be measured in an SI unit in a seconds. So we do use the other higher units, which are the secondary units like the or like the days to, uh, to give the idea about the time span. The other fourth one is electric run, and electric current is unit is ampere, and its symbol is A, capital A. Next is thermodynamic temperature and the temperature we do measure in Fahrenheit. We do, uh, we know the um, cent centigrade also. We know the Kelvin as well, but the Kelvin is the international, uh, uh, according to the international system of units, SI unit, but otherwise we can use their alternative units too. Next is the amount of substance. And that is basically the mole, which we will discuss in this lecture. So mole is the amount of substance. When you are measuring a substance in certain grams in a certain mole, so and you're expressing it in a gram and you are equalizing it to certain numbers of the particles, so that is the mole. And its symbol is M-O-L. So don't confuse that uh, abbreviation of the term with the molecule. This is not the short form of the molecule. So MOL is basically for the mole. Last one is the luminous intensity and that is to mention the brightness and its name is, its SI unit name is candela and its symbol is CD. Now we will come to the definition of mole, how we can define that one. So the mole, it is firstly, this is SI unit. It is a unit of measurement for amount of substance, an international system of units, which is established by the IUPAC, which is uh, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Now, uh, by definition, a mole of a substance or a mole of particles is defined as exactly 6.0221476 n to 10 raised to power 23 particles, which may be atoms molecules, ions, or electrons, depending on that we are measuring uh, which, uh, what kind of um, entity, either that is a molecule or ion or electron or in an atomic form. So in short, for particles, one mole is equivalent to the 6.02, and we, we sometimes skip the other digits and we just end up with the 6.02, into 10 raised to power 23 entities of the particle. What does it mean? It means that in a one mole of any substance, there are 6.02 hexillion uh, particles, 6.02 hexillion particles which are present in that one. So now you can imagine that when we are talking about the one mole of a compound or one mole of a larger thing, so for the larger entity, uh, you may compare with the um, balloons, right? So if you uh, wanted to know as um, uh, one mole of that balloons, so we are not going into that de detail that it is at atomic level, 
So there should be the 602 hexillion or the 6.02 into raised 10 raised to power 23 balloons should be there to make it one mole. And if we are working on a particle size atomic level, so one mole means that they are these particles, but these particles are not visible to eye. So we have to measure that one. And in measurement, we will see that what is the amount on the scale, on a balance for that particular substance, which is making a one mole. So interesting thing is this one, that if you compare the larger things versus the elements and atoms, so the atom, one mole of atom is very um, smaller in size because the atom is uh, very tiny in its size. So that is able, scalable, and that you can put that in a very small container, in a very small test tube. So uh, unlike the other larger compounds or the larger entities or the species. So here, the explanation of mole is, one mole is amount of substance that contain as many entities as a number of atoms is exactly 12 grams of the carbon, 12 isotopes of carbon. So we have seen that there are the number of um, some elements do exist in more uh, isotopic form. So isotope is that one which has the same atomic number but different uh, atomic mass, right? So the carbon do exist as a carbon 13 also and the carbon 12. So carbon 12 is basically the most abundant one. So that do exist and that is the ideal or you can say the template, the reference, the standard by which all of the elements have measured. Uh, why that was chosen? The first thing is that it, it's carbon 12 isotope is the most abundant one that do exist abundantly. And in the universe, and the second thing, this is ideal case in which they are the carbon, uh, they are the pro uh, six protons and they are the six neutron. And this is in a smaller level. This is basically having the equal ratio of uh, protons and the neutrons, which is, which is making this one as a lighter template, measurable lighter element by which we can compare the lighter and the heavier elements. So uh, the number which we are talking about again and again, that is the 602 hexillion, or uh, if you just remove its fra uh, decimal, uh, move its decimal from the last side to this one to give the one digit at initial um, significant figure. So this is a 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23. And that is basically called as Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is on the name of a scientist who basically experimentally determined the number of atoms in 12 gram of isotopically pure carbon 12 and is equal to 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23. And from that time, that was established that the one mole of carbon is equivalent to the 12 gram of the carbon and in one mole which is equivalent to the 12 gram, it, there are the 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 atoms of the carbon. So one mole of anything contains 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 entities. So entities is a general word, which means that that measurement could be for an um, atom, that could be for a molecule, so on the basis of that one, that entity will be, uh, will be in that number, but the number will be fixed, means that if there's a molecule, so there will be the 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 molecules in one mole of that particular molecule. And if there is an atom is there, so one mole of that particular atom, there are the 6.022 to 10 raised to power 23 atoms of uh, of that particular element. Uh, what what is, does it mean? It means that when you are just taking uh, one particle of uh, a very small particle of any of the molecule, so it doesn't mean that you are taking the one gram or the one piece of that one. So there are the millions of that particles which are attached. So this is even then the gigantic representation of that molecule. So, but for or 
eyes, that is just a very small piece of that one. So we have to, when we put that on a scale or on a balance, so that we can see that it, it do have a weight. So from that weight, we can estimate that what are the numbers of mole of that particular molecule. So in that mole, how many the numbers of uh, molecules are present according to that Avogadro's number. So we'll do that calculations. So here you have to see that examples to make your concept more clear that if I say that there is one mole of hydrogen, so that is equivalent to in terms of you, if you have to mention that how many atoms are there in numbers, then you will mention that one mole of hydrogen is equivalent to 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 atoms of hydrogen. If I say one mole of hydrogen molecule, this is a hydrogen gas, which is diatomic, means they are, this is in a molecular form, they are the two hydrogens uh, which are combined, so H2. So it means there is the 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 molecules, molecules of hydrogen H2. And for the atoms, we will multiply that with the two. One mole of CH4 methane as a molecule, which is a natural gas. So um, for one mole of methane, there will be the same Avogadro numbers of molecule in one mole of that one. So one mole of calcium chloride. So this number is same, only the entities have changed that in form of atom, they are, they are the, these, these numbers of atoms. Then if there's a molecule, there is the Avogadro number of molecule in one mole of that particular compound or molecule. So the mole to number of entities. So what we can do and how that can be calculated. So moles of a substance, if you take in account Avogadro's number, so you can calculate the number of atoms or molecules means, so if there's a one mole, so that will simply multiply with the Avogadro's number and you will get the number of atoms or molecules, which is 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23. So let's say this is a water molecule. Uh, this red color is basically representing the oxygen and the white are the hydrogen one. And you have seen um, uh, in our ball and stick model, which I usually present in, a cl in my class. So these white balls are basically representing the hydrogen and the red ball is representing the oxygen. So this is a single molecule of water molecule. And we have just calculated its atomic uh, its molecular mass. So that was 18 AMU, atomic mass unit. AMU stands for atomic mass unit, right? So Avogadro's number of water molecule in a mole of a water, in one mole of a water, there are 18 grams. And how many number of molecules of water in one mole or in 18 grams are? These are 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23. And now you can see that this is the laboratory size sample. So we can put that one mole, which is the 18 gram, in a beaker, which is measurable. So this is not very large that we can't um, uh, have that space. So example calculation, uh, there is a question, how many sodium atoms are present in 0.35 mole of sodium, right? So how will we will do that calculation? So first thing is what is the information has given to you? So the information which has provided to you is basically the mole. This is the 0.35 mole of sodium. And we have to calculate the atoms, right? So uh, for this, I would share in the, okay, let me go. I just wanted to, find out the whiteboard yeah so we can do that one let's say uh, the sodium sodium's atomic mass is if you know this is and you can check that from the periodic table right so this is the this is the 23 atomic mass unit 
this is the 23 sodium right it's it's atomic mass and now the number of moles we have provided is 0.35 right so we can simply do that calculation by the unitary method too so let me write you know you don't get confused with it that what is that and this is, this is the mole we are provided right so we do have to calculate the number of atoms in that mole and what information we have which we have uh, from our discussion is that one mole of any substance either that is atom or either that is molecule is equal to 6.02 and 2 into 10 raised to power 23 right so one mole contain 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 now we have to calculate the number of moly uh, atoms in 0.3 mole of sodium right so through the unitary method what we can do is 0.35 right mole contain so what we will do is do we have to divide or multiply this one right so one will contain this one how how much atoms will contain by the 0.35 mole of sodium so that will be that you have to multiply the 6.0 2 and 2 into 10 raised to power 23 right so you will see that and if you just solve that one so you will get that answer right so i'm just leaving for you that you have to tell me that what would your answer in the comment section so then we can discuss that one right here so you will multiply whatever the answer you will get so you can again simplify for the single uh, or the two units right and then that power will be added to that one this is the um, simple scientific um, and the basic mathematic uh, mathematics uh, mathematical rules that how uh, when you are moving decimal from back to this side from right to left side so these are the positive powers and when you are moving this decimal from left to the right side this get the negative one then that will subtract it from the positive side right so uh, overall if you just uh, go for it um, so you have to tell me that what was your answer but the procedure is the same one so another expression if you um, are easy with that this is the most simplest one that i have mentioned you that you can do with the unitary method but otherwise you can simply do this that you have to write this 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 and this is the number of atoms per one mole right and you will multiply it with the point three five moles right to give to get the number of atoms let me write this so that will be the number of atoms yeah so that will give you the number of sodium atoms right so atoms because right now this calculation is uh, for the atomic level right 
So now we'll go back to our slides. So yeah, where we were. Okay. So uh, in a similar way, you have to calculate for the second question, how many moles of C2H6 are present in 3.00 into 10 raised to power 21 molecules of this is basically the ethane one, right? So this is a C2H6. So uh, right now, I am not going into the, I, I, I haven't asked you that question in which you have to calculate its molecular for uh, weight, but you can practice with that one. Each carbon is having the atomic mass 12. So if they are the two carbons, you will simply multiply with that one. And in total, they are the six. So you will just, um, add the 24 plus six, so that will be the 30, right? So it's uh, molecular weight will be the 31. And, uh, but right now this is not involved in, uh, in all this problem. So you just have to go strictly with the Avogadro's number and the moles. So right now in this question, you have given the number of molecules and you have to see that in the, if you are provided with these number of molecules so what are what is the mole of that ethane so a, a, a quick hint is this one that if you can just see that one so this is less than the avogadro's number so then it means that their answer must be uh, less than the one mole right now the mole relationship so again this is just um, more explanation in a tabular form so you can get the idea that um, if you have to see uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide then you just should know that what are the Avogadro's relationship with the atom and a molecule right so name of a substance atomic nitrogen its formula is n single n formula weight is 14 right and this is uh, formula weight is also me uh, i should mention that this is basically in atomic form this is the atomic mass right so nitrogen has atomic mass 14 and the molar mass because this is in a single form this is not the molecule so its formula weight or its atomic weight is equivalent to its molecular weight so there is no difference between that now the number and kind of particles in one mole so of course if this is the atomic form so they are the 6.02 into 10 raised to power 23 n atoms in it. Now, if we go for the molecular nitrogen, which is a dinoid nitrogen, so this is a molecule here. So it means if one nitrogen has the atomic mass 14, so what would be the uh, total uh, mass for or the molecular weight for nitrogen gas? Or the dinitrogen is 28. Simply, so you can just multiply with the two. So, or 14 plus 14, so that is the 28. Now the molar mass is 28. So its formula weight is also, so there is no simplification of it. So this molecule do exist in a simple form as N2 and it's in a molecular form as N2. So now what are the number of molecules in it? Number of molecules are 6.02 into 10 raised to power 23 N2 molecules. But if we have to see that how many number of atoms are there, so definitely, they are the two atoms which are two moles of that uh, nitrogen. So uh, it means that will be multiplied with the two and that number of Avogadro's number are there as an atom in one mole or the 28 gram of this. So do remember that what is the molecular weight or the molar mass of a substance atom or a molecule that is basically the one mole of that molecule right so again same is for the silver silver atomic mass is 107 and here it is and the silver ion obviously there is no change in its atomic mass um the, there is only the change in its um uh, charge or ionic form because and that is only concerned with the electron so that is not having any effect on nuclei so that's why the atomic mass is the same one so the same number of 
or silver atoms or silver ions are there in one mole of silver or silver ions. Now the next is the barium chloride, BaCl2. So its uh, molecular mass or the formula weight is 208.2. So how we get that one? So you just have to consult a periodic table. So you will see the uh, atomic mass of barium. You will see the atomic mass of the chlorine and you have to multiply for two with the atomic mass of one chlorine because there are in total the two chlorine atoms are there. So now you uh, summing up all these, so you will get the 208.2 uh, as a formula weight and as a molar mass of that one. So a uh, formula weight is basically the atomic mass unit. So it means that you are taking all atoms in account for molecule or the atoms in form of the atoms to calculate their formula weight, the simplest formula weight. And this is giving through the information of atomic mass. Unit. The molar mass is basically, uh, more technically, this is the grams, this is measured in grams per mole. So in one mole, how many grams are there? So this is giving you the molar mass. So when the molecules have the uh, same uh, molecular structure and ratio, in their formula, in the simplest, or uh, you can say that uh, in their uh, simpler uh, formula um, and their molecular formula, so they have the same uh, molecular weight in, in that case, right? Now the conversion calculations. So how we can convert the grams into moles and moles into grams? So though we have discussed it, but right now from this um, expression, this is easier for you that in which direction you have to move for one conversion to another and what uh, uh, value you will take an account for that calculation. So for example, if you are provided with the moles and you have to um, calculate, uh, if, if you are provided the grams, for example, is if you are provided with the grams and you have to go for the moles conversion, then you have to take in account the molecular weight as well. Because grams divided by molecular weight will give you the moles, right? And if the moles are there, molecular weight is there, so then you can calculate the grams of that molecule or the substance. Now, if there is a moles and you have to calculate this formula unit or the number of atoms, so what you will do is that you will simply multiply with that one, right? So that will give you the formula unit, how many entities are there. So the example is this one, that what is the mass of 0.25 moles of CH4? So the information we have provided is the number of moles. Uh, the molecule, which is a CH4. So we can simply calculate its molecular weight. So 12 plus four is basically 12 plus four is 16, right? So here, the, um, we have to calculate the mass of that moles of CH4. So what I told you that mass means you have to calculate the grams of that molecule, right? So for this, we have to use the molecular weight into account. We have provided the moles. So how we can do that one? So again, you can use a simple unitary method as well. And the expression would be, the ultimate expression would be like this. Otherwise you can do step by step. So for example, uh, we, we will write what we know already. So one mole, we will write the one mole of CH4 contain is equal to 16 grams, right, by weight. So 0.25 means that you have to simply multiply the 0.25 into with the 16 gram. So uh, it's molecular weight. So then you will get the grams of CH4. So now I can mention um, the simple formula for you and I can write the exact expression so even if you can remember that one that would be easier um, so the formula for calculating the number of 
sorry, the number of moles, or you can say the moles calculation, right, is equal to number of moles can be calculated by the mass, and that mass is the measurement measured mass or what is the given mass, right? So I don't know. I'm just pressing the cursor two times. Sorry. So mass divided by molecular weight, right? So that expression can be. Um, can be um, uh, you can say modify or rearrange for what you already have what you have provided and what you have to calculate for example so the number of moles is equivalent to the mass which is the amount of that substance divided by its molecular weight so if you have the number of moles which you have provided this is a 0.25 so the mass you have to calculate and the molecular weight you can simply get from the CH4 because that information you already have provided, right? So it means when you rearrange the equation for your desired amount. So here we need to calculate the mass. So how we can rearrange that equation, that mass. So don't uh, turn or convert us. Uh, uh, a unit or a amount or uh, the expression in the denominator denominator uh, if you have to calculate that one so because you need don't need its negative answer so you have to keep that in a positive side so mass is already on numerator so we don't need to shift the mass so we shift the other um, uh, units or the um, you can see the quantities so to uh, rearrange the equation so mass is equal in two so i'm just moving i'm shifting molecular weight to the other side of the equation so then if that was dividing so that will be multiplied on other side right so it means the number of moles number of moles right and multiply by i just have to draw it in this tower is molecular weight right so m dot w is the short expression you can use for the m w right so for mass you can rearrange this equation so if you remember that equation so you know how to play with that equation so if you are required or if you have asked to uh, calculate something. So that was um, the end of this lecture. So have a good day. And I'm sharing uh, the worksheets with you, which you will practice. So they are almost 12 questions. So that will be good enough for your practice for the mole conversion and the calculations. Have a good day.